pandemic well and truly pushed the economy off a cliff in the second quarter. At 33%, this GDP fall is roughly four times, four times worse than the peak of the great financial crisis in 2008. Even going back to the Great Depression, the U.S. economy only contracted 13% in 1932. Those downturns were devastating because how long they lasted, just how much pain is ahead will certainly depend on the speed of the recovery. Thomas Phillipson served three years as acting chairman of Donald Trump's Council of Economic Advisers before stepping down in June. He joins us live now from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thomas, thank you so much for being with us. So uh, what do you make of these GDP numbers? Is the worst over yet, do you think? Well, it's a huge number, obviously. It's three times the worst we've seen in 1958. It's about uh, four times what we saw in the Great Recession. The thing that people miss, I think, in this number, in this report, the, the, thing, the number that stood out most to me was that disposable income has gone up 45% in this uh, environment in the last uh, quarter. That's a pretty remarkable thing. So people have actually gotten richer uh, due to not their private income, but obviously the transfer payments from the government. So I think that's a clear indication, and I would disagree respectfully with your previous uh, speaker who said now is not the time to cut back. I think that's a clear indication that we overreacted in, in our fiscal response. We basically made people richer through fiscal policy in the second quarter. And, you know, there's a role for government insurance for these big shocks that affects everyone. But this is like having a car insurance where your Honda get replaced by a Ferrari once it gets hit. And I think that's kind of indicative in this number. It's also an insurance where your kids are paying the premium, but that's a different story we have to deal with in the future. So you talked about, obviously, uh, the unemployment insurance the government has been paying out and that affected people's disposable income. That money runs out this week. So what do you make of, you know, what Senate Republicans have proposed in terms of stimulus and what more do you think the government should be doing to stave off further economic declines? Well, so there's, there's basically on the, on the unemployment insurance, it's not only the unemployment insurance that has led to the disposable income. We also had cash payments. And then we have the uh, payments to companies to retain their workers. So it's a combination of everything that's gone out. It's not only the unemployment insurance. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., it's currently that unemployment insurance or the unemployment insurance piece of that served a great purpose in the COVID uh, uh, pandemic when it started. Essentially, it's pay it paid people not to work, which was kind of a, a, an effective thing to do because we wanted to essentially destimulate the economy to destimulate the infection. It was successful in the, for doing that, but estimates indicate about a two thirds of workers are better off on the government program than they are working before. So that's a little excessive when you want to have the economy take off again. And I think it's going to be interesting to see in August now uh, whether the unemployment insurance, basically, the people insured is about 17 million of, of them right now are actually going to be dropping because people are now have, have a larger incentive to, to go back to work. It's been very hard for small uh, companies to retain their workers when they're getting paid more to stay home. So just in terms of the recovery, a lot of people, you know, a month ago or two months ago were talking about the possibility, I believe Larry Kudlow was one of them, about a V-shaped recovery. That clearly is not the case. What sort of recovery are we going to see going forward, do you think? And is there anything you think the White House should now be doing um, to really help economic growth in this country? So there's a couple of things here. One is that there's way too much, much attention, I believe, in my opinion, being paid to the government's role in this. This is really the private sector driving this pandemic in the U.S. And you saw that in March where, you know, people stopped going to restaurants way before their governments banned restaurant attendance, et cetera. And they were not as quick out when the government lifted things. They were not quick out. They kind of sort of gradually went back. So it's not just government policy. Again, you see this in Washington and California and the U.S., very stringent policies, but they still have these surges of cases coming back. 